Buenos dias, everyone. My name is Amanda, and today I'm going to show you how to make bona lasagna. I'm sure you've all heard the expression, as American as apple pie. Well, on the tropical island of Guam, which is where I was born, the bona lasagna is as Guamanian as you're going to get. I'm sure you've all wanted to make a dessert that your guests will love, something that they won't forget once they leave. Well, if you follow the simple steps that I'm going to show you, you're going to have them begging for the recipe. I guarantee. First, I'm going to show you the ingredients that you will need. Second, I'm going to show you how to make the batter. And third, I'm going to show you how to fry them. Now, first, now that I have sh shown you what we are going to do, I'm going to show you what ingredients you're going to need. You're going to need two pounds of bananas. You're also going to need sugar, flour, coconut, vanilla extract, and it can be genuine or imitation. It does not matter. The flavor is the same. The price is the only thing that's going to be different. You're also going to need one, table, one teaspoon of baking powder. Okay. Well, now that I've shown you what you're going to need, let me show you how to make the batter. First, you're going to peel two pounds of bananas, and you do want to make sure that they're ripened. Sometimes when you go in a store, whether it's Harris Teeter or Food Lion or wherever, you cannot find a single ripened banana. They're always green. Mm -hmm. So, just in case, if you come across bananas that are green, if you stick them in a brown paper bag, they'll be ripened the next day. Compliments to Walmart. It's on their side. <laughs> so what you do is you peel the bananas, and then you're going to leave them, you're going to smash them up. You can also, you can use your hands, if you have children, have them put on gloves. You can, the first time I made this, I smashed them up with my hands. It was a mess. It was fun, but it was a mess. So if you have children, you can get them to mash it up. If you do not have a mixer, and I had this the whole time and didn't even realize it. <clears throat> you can tell how much I cook. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you want to mix this in here. You want to get a, like almost like a, a, a watery consist consistency. Then you're going to mix four cups of flour. I cut down on the servings just to show you guys what to do. You're going to mix four cups of flour. Then you're also going to, you're going to mix this in and then you're going to add in four cups of sugar. Now for those of you who are watching the figure or if you're going to be serving this to someone who is diabetic, you can also use a sugar substitute such as Splenda or Equal or whatever. These things are delicious, I'm telling you. You may find that you won't even need to add sugar to them. The bananas alone give it a really, really, really sweet flavor. So you're going to add the sugar. Then um, you are going to add one cup of coconut. Now, in the original recipe that I found on Wikipedia.com, it did not call for coconut and it did not call for vanilla extract. But when I was surfing the web, I found similar recipes to the one on Wikipedia.com, and they they were calling for a lot of other stuff like eggs and stuff that I wouldn't even imagine putting in there. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to take some of the ingredients from the other websites and I'm going to make some and make my own. And it turned out really good. Then you're going to add one tablespoon of vanilla extract. It, the really, I believe it said the first time it had one teaspoon off of uh, Village Experts, but I added one tablespoon because it gives it a little bit more flavor. Then you're going to add the one teaspoon of baking powder. You're going to mix this all together and you're going to let it get more like a, a doughy consistency. And it should turn out similar to this. This one's a little brown because it's been sitting out. Did everyone see it? Okay. Well, now that I have shown you how to make the batter, I'm going to explain to you how to fry them. So when frying these, you can use a fried egg if you guys have one, or if you don't, you can use just a pot with some oil. When you use the pot with oil, you want to put it on medium. And for the fried egg, you want to use about medium as well. I believe the temperatures are a little different. I haven't used one in years. I thought about buying one, but I stuck with the pot. It's a little bit easier. When choosing an oil, to make one of the saga. You want to choose an oil, whether it's bone lasaga or french fries, you always want to choose an oil that does not have a lot of flavor. If you choose one like canola or um, any other type of oil, it's going to dominate the flavor of whatever you're cooking, and so when you taste it, it's going to taste greasy. I don't know if you've ever been to a restaurant where you just overpowered with the greasy taste and you can't really enjoy the food. It's because of the oil that they're using. So. You definitely want to use peanut oil, but today I did, in the bono lasagna that I made for the class, 
I did not use peanut oil because just in case if anyone's allergic to peanuts. So you definitely want to use peanut oil and you want to set that on medium heat and you do not want to take it any higher than that. If you do, it'll cause the bone of the saga to burn from, cook from the outside in. And I did that one time and they were very, very undone on the inside and they were not that good. So after you do that, that's going to take about five minutes. And then what you're going to do is, in the batter, now you don't have to make these into balls or anything like that. You can just scoop them up like this. I'm going to use this for plants. This is my pot. And you're just going to drop them in just like that. As soon as you drop them in, they're going to fall to the bottom. When they do, you just want to kind of give them a boost back up because sometimes they'll stay on the bottom. Not always, but they may stay on the bottom and start to burn the bottom. So let them back up and then you're going to keep them afloat. And you want to turn them frequently to make sure that they brown on all sides. And then after they're done, which should be about between five and seven minutes, I have time, just about five and seven minutes, then after they are done, you want to just pull them out and then set them on a paper towel and let them cool. All right. Well, now that I have showed you how to fry them, I'm going to talk about some toppings that you can put on at the end. Okay. With the bone of a you can make, you can put a lot of different things on it. You can put chocolate syrup, you can put icing, you can put chocolate icing, everything. Chocolate nuts, coconut, syrup, cinnamon. I even put a little cinnamon in the one of the saga that I made today. But what I'm going to show you how to do is to tell you how to do is make a confection of sugar icing. What you're going to do is you're going to take one and a half cups, one and a half tablespoons of boiling water. You're also going to take one tablespoon of oil and you're going to mix that with one and a half cups of confection of sugar. When you make first, let me say this, when I started out yesterday, I made one cup and then I eventually added a little bit more sugar. You can kind of play around with how much icing you're going to make versus on how much um, vanilla sake you're going to make. The one that I made today, the amount for two pounds makes about 10 to 12 servings. You can feed a lot with that. So you're going to mix that together and you're going to get a very nice consistency. And when you're finished, you can just put them on top of the vanilla saga. Then you can drizzle a little chocolate on them. I say sugar-free. You do not have to use sugar-free. You can use whatever kind you like. And if you want to make a Nestle's cocoa chocolate icing instead of the powdered sugar icing, all you do is substitute the powdered sugar for instead of the um, substitute this chocolate powder instead of the powdered sugar, and it'll be the ice. It'll be chocolate icing. <laughs> okay. So as you do that, you are going to also, you can put um, sprinkles on them and they're going to be finished and ready to be served. Well now that I have shown you how to make Bono and Saga, I'm going to recap the steps. So you do not have any Miss Kitchen misfortunes, mishaps like I have in the past with burning myself. <laughs> First I showed you how to, um, the ingredients that you're going to need. Second, I showed you how to make the Bono butter. Third, I explained to you how to fry them. And fourth, I talked about some great toppings that you can put on them. Well, I hope that you enjoyed my presentation today and learning how to make Bono Asada. But I hope that you enjoy trying them more because I brought enough for everyone. And I thank you very much. Thank you.